welcome Alice to Sitges again. And uh, it's, uh, it's an incredible actress and an incredible uh, face in the fantastic genre for a lot of movies. Uh, I, I said her yesterday, I was scared by her in Ghost Story, Johnny Ruin. <laughs> it's a, such a, a great film, a little bit uh, uh, forget in, in that moment because it was different. Yeah. It's a different kind of movie of uh, Ghost Story, but uh, now is a lot of people love the film, a, a reivindication of the film in everywhere. And uh, uh, for another films like, uh, of course, uh, uh, Sleepwalkers. It's a very cool movie uh, of my old friend Mil Garris. Yeah. It's a close friend of the festival. Stephen King uh, adapted uh, well, a story of uh, Stephen King. And for a lot of people also, uh, the community of the Star Trek, is, Alice was the Queen Borg in a very, very famous film of, of the saga Star Trek First Contact by Jonathan Frakes. It was uh, an amazing uh, sequel of the, the the best of, of two worlds, the, the series, the Star Trek New Generation. This, uh, all this uh, and the incredible uh, career in every genre movie in for a lot of years, and also films I like very much and was uh, proud to put in this festival, like Institute Benjamenta by Quai Brothers, one of the best movies uh, in the 19s or the beautiful uh, Haunted Summer by Ivan Passa. It's the, the same story of the, uh, the creation of the Frankenstein novel. Uh, three films in, a, in the same year, more or less. Yeah. A Spanish one by Gonzalo Suarez. Yeah. Gothic, the yeah. very the delirium. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Gothic by Ken Russell and Ivan Passa. Yeah. And today is the time to award it uh, Alice and to introduce to the audience the film Sea Will by Charlotte Colbert, a beautiful haunted history of witches, past, and a lot of very interesting things. In a beautiful shot. Welcome, Alice, and we, uh, we begin a dialogue with you here and with the people this afternoon in the in Sitges. I want to begin with uh, a question and after uh, you can answer Ali's uh, questions uh, about um, Hunter Summer yeah. because in your career uh, you have a lot of films and Hunter Summer was a problematic film in, in terms of it was a John Huston film in the beginning yes. and after like, Adam Passer uh, shot the movie but also was very problematic because a lot of projects in the same way yes. about the Frankenstein creation novel Marie Silly. What is your uh, point of view now of about Maricelli and the uh, like a writer and uh, the position of the Maricelli in the in the new new days like a, a woman writing a general novel and in, in a very very complicated time no y what are your memories of that film eh, estaba pensando en la película Haunted Summer, que fue un poquillo complicada. En ese momento había bastantes proyectos eh, del mismo tipo. Me gustaría saber cuál es su opinión sobre la escritora Mary Shelley, la, la autora de Frankenstein, y sobre el hecho de que en esa época una mujer escribiera una novela de, de ese género. It was an extraordinary piece of work to be part of um, for many reasons, but perhaps the principal reason is that a great deal of the dialogue was taken from their letters and their diaries. So because I never met John Houston, I honestly can't remember how I got the role because it was before you did self-tapes or before you were put on tape. I have no memory of how I got the role, but I got the role. Um, and then John Houston became too unwell to travel. Um, and Ivan Passo was made the director. And um, I think most of the cast remained yeah. intact. Um, but what that meant was that we had months to live with the material. 
and we all took it very, very seriously. Um, we read everything all of them had ever written, and we shared material. I um, knew I had Haunted Summer, and then shortly thereafter, because of the delay, I was cast in Barfly. So I was living in England, but because of Barfly, I don't know if anyone knows the film, it was a film about a, an American poet called Bukowski. Yeah. So I was sh filming in, in LA. So we all got together. Um, Laura, uh, Eric Stoltz, Philip um, Anglim, and we shared material back and forth. And then Laura came to London and together we went up to Byron's house in the north and we went to the apartment where he lived in Albany in London. And we also went to Mary Shelley's mother's grave, which is in the, um, the parish of St. Pancras. And amazingly enough, I live in that parish now. I was living in that parish whenever I was in England. It happened that I was in that area. Um, because that was the only way that Shelley could meet Mary. Because I think he was so bohemian. And I mean, not that her parents weren't bohemian. Her parents were pretty out there. But for whatever reason, it was difficult for her to meet Shelley. But she could go to her mother's grave. So he courted her over his mother's, her mother's grave. So we went to Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin's grave. Um, so we did this great pilgrimage. And then we went to Rome for a month of rehearsals, which was a luxury that you never get in film. So we rehearsed in Rome, and we were actually staying in a hotel, which I think is called the Hotel de la Ville, at the top of the Spanish Steps. And Mary, they were staying in a little apartment just opposite the de la Ville, and below was, at the bottom of the Spanish Steps, had been Keats. So we were living in, it was just chance, but we were immersed in that world and everywhere we went, we felt their footsteps. And then we went to Lago de Como to shoot it because Lago, Geneva is too built up. So we shot for two months on Lago de Como in the summer and it was extraordinary. It was like dreaming. Um, and it was amazing to live inside their reality. And because we were mostly saying their words, that's what we felt we were doing. But apropos of Mary Shelley at this time, she, she moved me so much because I felt as if she had a, a very, very difficult life. Shelley was an extraordinary man, but he didn't live inside anyone's box. He was constantly falling in love with other people all the time, not necessarily consummating it, but his heart would go out because he was so empathetic. There's a wonderful story about Shelley of how he would go to the fishmonger because they still had the live fish in buckets of water. And he would use the last money he had to buy the buckets and take the fish to the Thames and throw them back into the river. So his heart went out to all living beings. And I mean, it went to the wind and the sea. He was open to everything. And I think it was very, very hard for her. And she lost several children several fetuses, she had several miscarriages. She, it, was, it was not easy for her to love him and to be with him. Oh my, my God, God, I haven't given, you must stop. 
Should we go back? No, wait, no, wait. I'm I so will ask you. I will ask you. I'm so sorry. Just remember me? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Lo siento mucho. I'm no, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll manage. <laughs> I'll, sorry. I'll manage. I'll manage. Um, bueno, fue una obra extraordinaria, eh, porque en parte una, una de las razones principales es que gran, mucho del diálogo que contenía la película formaba parte del libro. En cuanto al director, a John Huston, no tuve oportunidad de conocerle. De hecho, él estaba gravemente enfermo y no podía desplazarse, no podía viajar. Hubo que cambiar de director, pero sin embargo, eh, todo creo yo que permaneció intacto, según la idea que ya tenía John Huston del, del filme. Eh, todo el equipo nos tomamos el proyecto muy seriamente, nos lo leímos todo, todo al respecto, y eh, hablábamos al respecto, lo comentábamos entre nosotros. Eh, yo sabía que quería hacer esta película, de hecho, eh, yo vivía en Londres, pero a causa de la película Bath Fly estaba filmando en Los Ángeles. Y Lara, yo soy Lara, vino desde Londres y fuimos a visitar la tumba de la madre de Mary Shelley. Esta era la única manera de, eh, que había de que tuviera contacto con, con Shelley. Está enterrada en la parroquia de San Pancracio. Eh, los padres de Shelley eran un poco bohemios, de ahí un poco la, la dificultad de visitar la tumba, etcétera, etcétera. Tuvimos el lujo de ir a Roma a ensayar durante un mes y fue estupendo. Estuvimos en un hotel que estaba justo en la cumbre de las escaleras de España, que se conocen como las escaleras de España. Recuerdo un momento que allá abajo, eh, nosotros estábamos arriba y abajo de las escaleras, al pie de las escaleras había niños. O sea, vivimos, digamos, lo que era el, el, el sabor, la, la realidad de la ciudad. Y fue mm, por pura casualidad. Eh, Recuerdo haber estado rodando dos meses durante el verano y aquello fue como un verdadero sueño. Eh, fue increíble eh, adentrarme en, en, en la realidad de, de toda esa gente. En cuanto a Mary Shelley, volviendo a ella, me conmovió, me conmovió profundamente, puesto que me parece que tuvo una vida bastante difícil. Eh, tenía un marido era un buen hombre, pero era muy empático. Entonces, se, se enamoraba continuamente. Eh, su nivel de empatía era tal que iba al pescadero a comprar pescado que todavía estaba vivo y lo devolvía al mar. Yo creo que convivir con un hombre así no debió ser fácil para Mary Shelley, además de otros problemas como, por ejemplo, varios abortos que sufrió. So, uh, in respect of Mary Shelley, as a, looking at her from the perspective of here, she was extraordinary because her mother was a remarkable woman called um, Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. Um, so, when was this? This was like, it was the French Revolution. And Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin actually went, she was married to Godwin, who was a philosopher, and he and Col they were very on, on the fringes of progressive intellectual thought. Um, they lived on the edge of London. You know, Coleridge was there smoking opium. It was a very bohemian atmosphere that she grew up in. Um, eh, pensemos que estamos hablando de gente que vivió durante la Revolución Francesa y, y ella eh, y su marido 
eran de ideas progresistas, vivían en las afueras de Londres, eh, iban a locales donde eh, se fumaba opio, por ejemplo. And Mary Wollstonecraft actually went to cover the French Revolution as a journalist. She was the only woman. I mean, it was extraordinarily dangerous. So she is someone we need to make a film about because she was like one of the f groundbreaking feminists. She committed suicide, didn't she? I think she threw herself eventually into the Thames and the weight of the skirts took her down in the water. So Mary had a lot of tragedy in her life. The children she lost, the mother who killed herself. La madre de Mary Shelley fue de periodista a la Revolución Francesa. O sea, lo cual era extremadamente peligroso. Fue la, la, la única mujer que fue. Definitivamente creo que hay que hacer una película sobre este tema. Y fue una mujer que acabó con su propia vida. Una feminista absolutamente rompedora. Insisto, pues, que en que la vida de Mary Shelley no fue fácil eh, por el tema del marido, por los abortos, por el suicidio de su madre, etc. She, essentially, she eloped with Shelley really, and they went to Europe right after the Napoleonic Wars. I mean, the, Europe was in a state of flux and chaos. Um, she really took enormous risks as a human being. And I kind of feel that if she were alive now, she would be writing prolifically. But I think it was much harder for her then And in some ways, I think Frankenstein was a very personal story. I think she was in some ways writing about her own... Monster. Yes, yeah. It's so, uh, quite remarkable to have been given the chance, as I have many times, to experience life through another person who was actually alive's vision and journey. Ella, Mary Shelley, fue a Europa justo después de la guerra, lo que conllevaba asumir eh, enormes riesgos también. Yo creo que si Mary Shelley viviera ahora, escribiría muchísimo. Eh, Frankenstein, de hecho, eh, yo creo que es una obra sobre su propio monstruo, el monstruo que ella llevaba en su interior. Eh, para mí, sin duda, fue increíble tener la oportunidad de, 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 de encarnar a, a esa mujer y de, y de introducirme en, en, en ese personaje. ¿Queréis, eh, ¿Queréis preguntar ya o hago otra pregunta? ¿Tenéis alguna preparada ya? Okay, uh, and your career in the fantastic film genre is a, a little bit peculiar because it's, you are not the typical screen queen of the genre. You are, uh, you have a very complex uh, uh, characters. Yeah. What is your, your uh, idea of uh, a woman in the world of fantasy horror films? It's a, traditionally a very sometimes very uh, f uh, a, a place for men or for not for women. Women are screen queens sometimes, yeah. final girls, yeah. but not the typical characters your, uh, in your films. What is your, your proxim, uh, approximation about the, uh, these characters in, the, in your career? Mi, eh, mi pregunta es acerca de su, de su trayectoria en el género, en el género del cine fantástico, pues es bastante peculiar. Los personajes que ha encarnado eran en general bastante complejos. Pensemos, pensemos por ejemplo, en Haunted Summer. Eh, existe una mica la idea de que las mujeres en, no suelen ser protagonistas en las películas eh, de género fantástico. Tradicionalmente eh, de eso se han encargado los hombres. ¿Puedo sí, hablarnos Puedo hablarnos un poco al respecto. My task is to find the human being, mm -hmm. and there, 
strengths and their vulnerabilities and their loves and their fears and their journey and what they learn through the course of the story. So, and I come with an open heart and no judgment. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all I can do <laughs> and pray <laughs> that, that in fact the person will uh, show up, mm -hmm. will arrive mm -hmm. and do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Pues la verdad es que oh, I eh, yo jamás eh, enfoco un papel desde una perspectiva de género, sino que eh, lo que yo, mi tarea consiste en encontrar al ser humano que hay en ese personaje en descubrir eh, sus pequeñeces, eh, sus miedos, en sus emociones. Eh, me acerco al personaje con el corazón abierto de par en par, sin ningún tipo de prejuicio, de juicio, y lo único que puedo hacer es rezar para que acabe, acabe apareciendo ese personaje y que lo haga por mí. Eh, enhorabuena por, por su carrera y sobre todo por su papel en, en She Will, que creo que está maravillosa. Eh, quería preguntarle, sé que su carrera es muy larga, muy grande, pero está muy vinculada al fantástico y me gustaría saber si Alice Critch, la espectadora, si le gusta el género fantástico, si le gustan este tipo de películas o qué tipo de películas le gustan. Y una segunda pregunta es si podría hablar algo, aunque sea, de la secuela de la matanza de Texas que está rodando, si se puede decir algo. What is wonderful and special about working in the genre of fantasy is that it allows you to go to places that, that are bigger than everyday life. It allows you, if you get it right, because you never know, <laughs> Um, to sound a note that is an archetype or that sets a reverberation of the collective unconscious, something that we all have perhaps not experienced ourselves but is part of the human collective experience. And to be able to do that on film is very interesting because film must be real to work in a way well, theater is real but it's different um shall i stop yes please <laughs> El cine fantástico es maravilloso y es muy especial porque nos permite viajar a sitios que trascienden lo cotidiano. Nos permite vivir cosas que están, de hecho, en el inconsciente colectivo, aunque no las vivamos cotidianamente. Yo creo que una película tiene que ser real, tiene que ser de verdad para funcionar. Lo mismo con el teatro, pero es algo diferente. You need many things come together. You need a script that, that is the springboard for that. Um, you need an overall vision, like in She Will, like in Gretel and Hansel, a very powerful, indeed like in Sleepwalkers, someone who has a powerful vision so that it releases big emotions and big experiences. Um, And that is what is the great wonder of fantasy, is that it allows us all to go to a different place. Creo que una película necesita para funcionar reunir varios elementos, un buen guión, alguien con una visión potente de las cosas, eh, como lo encontramos, por ejemplo, en, en esta última película, en She Will. 
eh, tiene que transmitir grandes experiencias, grandes sentimientos. Para mí este es el milagro del género fantástico, la capacidad de eh, desplazarnos, a, de llevarnos a lugares distintos. <risa> I can't, I can't tell you a lot. I was there for three days, so I'm dead before the titles. That much I can tell you. <laughs> But my character is the trigger. So I was gone before the blood started and the legs and the arms and before the chainsaw even was fired up. I was gone. I'd know nothing. It will be as much of a surprise for me as for anyone in this room. Pues la verdad es que en cuanto a la secuela de la matanza de Texas, no puedo decirles gran cosa, porque solo pasé tres días allí. Eh, mi personaje enseguida en, en muere, o sea, en, en, en seguida, en seguida desaparece, eh, aunque mi personaje es el detonante de la película en sí. Aún así, aún habiendo estado solo allí tres días, la verdad es que me lo pasé estupendamente y como no sé nada de la película, confío en que me sorprenda tanto como a ustedes. Hi, Alice. Hello. Uh, I work as an, uh, as an actress, too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, and I like to know how you approach to a character. Uh, if you can explain a little more. You, you have said something that you, you expect to feel things. But it really, how do you construct the character and how do you do it? I, I, I do not have a method. Um, every time is stepping into the void. I have no idea. I begin with nothing. Um, I look for a trigger. I don't know if I will find it. La verdad es que carezco de método. Con cada personaje doy un salto al vacío. No tengo ni idea de cómo va a ir. Yo parto de la nada. Busco un detonante sin saber si voy a encontrarlo o no voy a encontrarlo. So, um, I used to, when I was young, a long time ago, prepare exhaustively, obsessively. I would write notes, I would read everything, I would listen to music, I would look at pictures, uh, searching for... Um, I'm, I am learning to have more faith um, in, the, in the process. So I do all of that. I try to be less obsessed. Um, But, interestingly, I, uh, my husband writes and directs. I'll stop. La verdad es que cuando era joven, hace mucho tiempo, eh, yo llevaba a cabo una preparación obsesiva de mis personajes. Escribía, veía películas, leía muchísimo, llevaba a cabo una investigación exhaustiva. Evidentemente, todo esto sigo haciéndolo pero de una forma menos obsesiva. Lo que hago es intentar tener más fe en que daré con el personaje. Oh, uh, 2013 came up with this idea. We were working with a young Swedish actress and he said, oh, we have to do a theater version of Persona. So just very simply, as friends, the three of us, we started to explore the, the manuscript because it is a manuscript rather than a play or a film. Uh, Bergman wrote it actually completely delirious. He was meant to deliver a script. He got pneumonia and he was put in hospital completely high on pharmaceuticals and he wrote Persona, which wasn't the script he was meant to write. 
Mi marido también escribe y dirige. De hecho, eh, tenían, tuvimos un proyecto de 20, 2030, ¿es? ¿es así? 2030. Eh, eh, y empezamos eh, nosotros dos, más quien tenía que ser el guionista, tres amigos, a hacer, a, a, iniciamos el proyecto y, y el guionista eh, contrajo neumonía, entonces eh, tuvieron que ingresarlo y, y bueno, eh, le estábamos viendo un guión cuando en realidad lo que él estaba escribiendo no era exactamente un guión. Persona. Ingmar Bergman's persona, it's about a woman and a nurse, right? And um, for an hour and a half, the nurse talks. She just talks. Only right at the end does the woman speak, the actress speak. And so we prepared this and we did our own translation and, we, and eventually, in 2019, we put the play on and we were going to swap roles but it didn't work out that way so i just played the nurse no sé si habrán visto la película en la película durante una hora y media hay una enfermera hablando y es solo al final cuando eh, la actriz es la que habla eh, yo encarné exclusivamente a la enfermera it was 90 minutes no interval And now, we rehearsed this periodically over seven years. And that process, so once she says her first word, she doesn't stop, Alma. She, it's like you put your foot in the river and you're gone. And that has taught me to do the preparation, but in the moment, to put my foot in and be taken. Um, I don't know if that explains, and, and also, and not, oh. But we did it as, we did, we did it as a play in the theater, yeah. But that process of not being able to stop and think, but to be in the moment continuously was an, a huge experience for me as an actor. En los 90 estuvimos eh, ensayando durante siete años y en, durante ese proceso, mientras íbamos eh, preparando la obra, eh, cuando la enfermera dice la primera palabra, ya, ya, ya no deja de hablar, ya no cesa su discurso. Es un poquito como meter el pie en el río y dejarse llevar, ya desaparecer en su interior. Es un modo de trabajar en el que no piensas, te limitas a estar allí. So I, I've been with my husband for 40 years, and finally in this last 12 years, We've begun to work together. It took that long for us to learn, <laughs> to give to each, not have to hold on. Um, so I've produced two of his films. And one of them we shot in three prisons with huge groups of prisoners. And working with those men and in one prison women was another hugely illuminating experience for me as an actor because they came with no preconceptions, no tricks, nothing. They came empty. Mi marido y yo llevamos mucho tiempo juntos, llevamos 40 años juntos, pero solo hace 12 años que hemos empezado a, a trabajar juntos. O sea, nos ha llevado bastante tiempo empezar a colaborar. Yo he producido varias películas suyas. Una de ellas próximamente se rodará en cárceles, una en una prisión de mujeres. Para mí como actriz, este trabajo ha sido algo eh, revelador, porque las reclusas acudieron a participar en el proyecto 
de vacío, sin ningún tipo de prejuicio. I've been, I'm being asked to put all of this into words, but I try not to think about it too much, because you can trap yourself into um, attitudes and positions, and it's better not to. Me han pedido que, que hable de esto, que lo, que lo explique. Pero la verdad es que yo intento eh, no darle muchas vueltas eh, para no tomar partido, para no adop adoptar ninguna postura concreta al respecto. ¿Cómo fue trabajar con, uh, con Fred Astaire, Melvin Douglas... Uh... Si puede contar algo, a ver qué tal fue el rodaje. Si le trataron bien, porque ella en ese momento era joven, ellos ya estaban de retirada casi, y a ver cómo les trataron. It was the biggest gift for a new actor. It was my second movie. And I've said this already this morning, so forgive me if you've heard it before. They were remarkable. They were gallant. They were graceful. They didn't take themselves seriously at all. They had a sense of humor about who they were. And they were incredibly kind, not just to me and Craig, but to everyone. If you were the dolly pushing the grip, if you were a runner, they were remarkable. They were great human beings. Uh, to, it was the last movie of those four men. Creo que fue el mayor regalo que puede recibir una, una actriz novel. Aquella era mi segunda película y estos actores tan ya experimentados, tan veteranos, fueron increíbles, eran galantes. Tenían una gracia innata, uh, un gran sentido del humor, la capacidad de reírse de sí mismos. Eran inmensamente amables con todo el mundo. Eh, eran simplemente estupendos seres humanos. Eh, fue la última película que hicieron estos cuatro caballeros. Podría decir mil cosas al respecto. They were a for a young actor what to aspire to. Fueron como, como, una, como una lección, como una lección eh, para, para una joven como yo sobre eh, qué, qué espiar, qué, qué observar, bueno, a qué aspirar. The, the, the actors, es decir, and for, for monsters in yeah. the, the good sense. Yeah. Anteriormente trabajó en Star Trek como la Reina Borg. Eh, cuando trabaja en películas pertenecientes a franquicias que tienen tantos seguidores, no sé, ¿tiene una presión especial o es igual que una película original? No sé si, no sé, ¿qué, qué es lo que, lo que siente al trabajar así, si es mayor presión? Mm -hmm. I can't think about that. <laughs> I can only think about the woman. No puedo planteármelo. Yo en lo único que soy capaz de pensar es en la mujer. To, to, to be on the set and to try to find that truth, it's an overused word, but I don't know what other word to use, is so totally consuming, I haven't got space for anything else. <laughs> Estar en el set y buscar eh, esa verdad. Eh, ya sé que es, que es un cliché, que es un poco un lugar común, pero la verdad es que es, es agotadora esa búsqueda del de personaje, de la verdad del personaje. Un film que me gustó mucho, y como dije, fue mi primer choice en este festival en 1995, es el Instituto Benjamin. Está aquí. Sí. I select uh, with Alex Corina for this for Thank this you. festival. I have, I have no idea. <laughs> yes, yes, because we have a very good relation with the Quai brothers. With brothers, yeah. Twins. 
and uh, the Jules. twins, yeah, amazing guys. And uh, what was the relation with the Quai Brothers? Because it's a special team because we come from the animation and uh, a very special inner wall in his mind. <laughs> what about, but was about the, uh, the relation with the Quai Brothers? And also this amazing film because one of the most beautiful films uh, in I the 19s. I, well, I think it's perhaps one of the most beautiful films I have ever been in. Yes, it's true. Institut Bejamenta of the Quay Brothers, eh, apuntado, si no lo habéis visto. I don't know if you know who the Quay Brothers are. It was they, in Sitges in 1995. Uh, I know. Uh, yeah. Quay. Quay, Quay, Quay Brothers. Quay yeah. Brothers. They, are twins, uh, they are identical brothers. twins. La pregunta es en relación a, a una película a la que Angel tiene un cariño especial. Se proyectó en Sitges en 1995, es Instituto, Instituto Benjamenta, correcto. Eh, y la pregunta era sobre su relación con los hermanos Quaid, con los gemelos, son gemelos, son idénticos. ¿Por qué ambos tienen un mundo interior, la verdad, muy especial? Eh, Angel comentaba que es eh, una película que le parece de las más hermosas. Alice coincide con él diciendo que es probablemente una de las películas más bellas que jamás ha visto. They are identical. They were then. I could tell their difference by their voices. They're not so identical anymore. Um, I got the film at the last minute. Mm -hmm. I, my agent was, re represents another remarkable, well, a remarkable actress. Um, and she was their first choice. But there was a, a key reason why they might not get her. So my agent said to me maybe two weeks before, there's this project, and I don't know if I knew the actress if she will be able to do it. And I've suggested you to the Brothers Quay. Eh, los hermanos artífices de esta película, eh, yo en su momento los distinguía por las voces. Ahora ya no son tan parecidos. Y la verdad es que me concedieron el papel en el último momento. Mi agente representaba a otra actriz, una mujer absolutamente magnífica, magnífica actriz, y parece, según parece que esta era la primera opción. Pero eh, un día vino mi agente y me dijo, no sé si ella va a poder encarnar el papel, por lo tanto eh, he sugerido a los, a los responsables de la película que, que seas tú quien lo encarnes. The film was to begin on Monday. On Friday, I'm in Los Angeles. On Friday night, Jean calls me and she says, they want you to do the film. Okay. Um, they'd like to talk to you. So uh, there was no internet. <laughs> They sent me the script by fax. <laughs> In those days, you didn't get pages, you got a roll. Yeah, a roll. I sat by the fax machine and I watched the script go. <laughs> they had, it was pr typed, right? I read the script. I thought, I don't understand this at all. <laughs> They're going to call me in an hour. El, el rodaje tenía que empezar el lunes. El viernes yo me encontraba en Los Ángeles. Entonces va, mi agente me llama y me dice, el papel es tuyo. En aquella época no había internet, por lo tanto me enviaron el guión por fax. Eh, pero no iba por páginas, o sea, era todo el rollo del fax. Recuerdo estar allí sentada mirando el fax, cómo iba saliendo el guión, cómo iba saliendo el guión, que estaba mecanografiado, lo leí y no entendía absolutamente nada. So I said to them, 
I think it's very beautiful and very extraordinary, but I don't understand it. Así que les dije, lo encuentro hermoso, extraordinario, pero no entiendo. And so I don't know what I could offer. No sé qué puedo ofrecer. And they said, we will write and tell you. So it was, I went to bed, and the next morning I woke up. There was a snowdrift of facts. There was no paper left. Bueno, lo reescribiremos para ti. Al día siguiente me levanté y me encontré con una nube de papel de fax. They write beautiful, exquisite calligraphic handwriting. Tenían una caligrafía preciosa, exquisita. I had rolls of their ideas. Tenía rollos y rollos repletos de sus ideas. My agent said, call me at any time. So I called Jean and I said, I will do my best, but I don't know. Mi agente me dijo, llámame cuando quieras. Y yo le llamé y le dije, bueno, yo haré cuanto pueda, lo haré lo mejor que pueda. That was Saturday morning. On Saturday evening, I caught a flight to London. I got on Sunday morning. The twins were there. <laughs> Así que el sábado por la noche tomé un vuelo a Londres y ahí estaban los gemelos. Quite extraordinary. Um, they delayed. They started filming on Monday. They delayed my shooting to maybe Wednesday. Um, we were shooting outside London. Um, and they had taken over an old house. And in England, there's an expression so that each village has a, like, a green space. The house was on one side, I was in a hotel on the other. Eh, era una gente realmente extraordinaria. Empezamos el rodaje el lunes en las afueras de Londres, en una vieja casa. Hay un dicho en Inglaterra que decía eh, que toda que dice que toda ciudad tiene un espacio verde. Eh, nosotros teníamos por un lado el hotel y por otro lado esta casa a las afueras de Londres. So, I was still in my obsessive phase, and I used to do what was called a flow chart. I called it a flow chart of the, the, the character's journey. So I drew a graph. And I, I marked the journey on the graph. And so I drew my flow chart on the aeroplane and I showed the twins. And the twins were, they didn't, this had never happened to them before, that someone had a graph of a character. And so, so the twins were, they put up my graph. Um, they were amazing. They, like Charlotte, were artists as well as filmmakers. And because they were stop motion animationists, they were tactile and they painted, they transformed this house. They painted the inside. It was all painted, it was them. Bueno, y entonces todavía estaba en mi etapa obsesiva con respecto a la preparación de los papeles, así que me hice como un gráfico del personaje, un borrador eh, señalando el, el viaje del personaje. Cuando los gemelos lo vieron, eh, bueno, ellos nunca se habían encontrado con algo así, con, con un borrador, con un esquema, un gráfico de, de un papel, de una película, Esos, esos hombres, esos gemelos, eran increíbles. Además de cineastas, eran artistas. Tenían una visión muy táctil de las cosas. Ellos se eh, transformaron la casa por completo y, y la pintaron. Their vision was incredibly powerful, but I never felt as if anything was imposed on me. They, I would wake up, have a shower, drink coffee, clean my teeth, and walk to the house. 
And I would go in and I would feel as if I had begun to dream. They taught me to dream. The whole experience was like a dream. Um, quite extraordinary. Tenían eh, una visión de las cosas muy potente. Yo nunca, nunca tuve la sensación de que se me impusiera nada en absoluto. Yo lo que hacía cada día era, me despertaba, me duchaba, desayunaba y entonces iba hacia la casa. Y era como adentrarme en un sueño. Eh, todo el proyecto en sí eh, para mí fue... Eh, Fue un sueño. They were sleeping in the attic, right at the top, each in a little bed. Um, Ellos dormían en el ático, arriba de todo, cada uno en una camita, una cama pequeña. You got there at six in the morning, and they, and they were paying. They were painting. They were already. They were already painting. Ibas ahí a las seis de la mañana y te los encontrabas ya pintando. So. Stephen directed the actors. Timothy worked with the crew. One night, Mark Rylance, who was one of the, it was Gottfried John, Mark Rylance, and me, and a whole wonderful troop of actors who were part of the, the Magic Cirque, I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they were a wonderful uh, ensemble of actors who played all the butlers. Um, Mark and the twins got very, very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Mark slept on the set, the twins were upstairs, and the next morning, Timothy was talking to the actors and Stephen was talking to the crew. Was what happened? You know, no one said anything. They just completely flipped. And they would also finish each other's sentences. They really did. Stephen would start to talk and he would stop to think and Timothy would finish the sentence. It was wild experience. It was like stereophonic. You know, quite extraordinary. They were amazing. And in lunch break, we would play football. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, Steven se dedicaba a dirigir a los actores, Timas y trabajaba con, con el equipo. Eh, el equipo de, bueno, el reparto era extraordinario, era un grupo de actores maravillosos. Eh, recuerdo un día en que Mark y los gemelos eh, se emborracharon muchísimo. Mark acabó durmiéndose en el set y lo que pasó al día siguiente con los gemelos es que hablando uno con los actores y el otro con el equipo eh, se fueron intercambiando. Cada uno acababa la frase que el otro había empezado. Fue algo como estereofónico. Um, <risa> Comentarles también que a la hora del almuerzo jugábamos al fútbol. No But sé cuántos de ustedes habrán visto la película. It's, a, it's available. It's yes. Very. It's, it's, está disponible. It's black and white done. Oh. Blanco y negro. Mm. It's it's beautiful black and white. I es mean, un blanco y negro precioso. It's a very difficult form, black and white. Es una forma muy difícil de trabajar en blanco y negro. Very, very hard to light. And there are not many labs anymore that can process it. Muy difícil de iluminar y no quedan muchos laboratorios que sean, que puedan procesarlo. But for me, the film is film as in poetry, as opposed to film as in prose. It's an extraordinary juxtaposition of images and emotions. It's quite remarkable, yeah. Pero para mí en esta película es muy destacable la, la, el posicionamiento de, de las imágenes. Es un aspecto notable de, de la cinta. Uh, 
a film is an extraordinarily potent medium. Yo creo que una película es un medio de una potencia extraordinaria. It has an extraordinary capacity to take you there and expand your awareness and it is very underused as an art form, I believe. Tiene la capacidad de, esta capacidad extraordinaria de trasladarte a algún lugar y yo creo que no se utiliza lo suficiente eh, cine, las películas, como forma de arte. Pues yo solo quiero decir, uh, I want to say that uh, it's a pleasure to have here uh, this discussion with you and uh, this... Uh, and also uh, give the award today, uh, tonight, with uh, an extraordinary film like She Will, Charlotte Colbert, it's an official section. Uh, and thank you for everything you made, uh, every film you made. Uh, all, we are talking some of them, but it's a lot of films, different genres. Uh, Gretel and Hansel, I, I love this movie also. Gretel and Hansel. Yeah. Es un beautiful film also of general movie. Angel But, está agradeciendo a Alice todo su trabajo. Hemos mencionado algunas mm. películas, pero hay más. Se la ha mencionado concretamente mm. la de Gretel y Hansel, yeah, que yeah. le gusta especialmente, y ha recordado que esta noche recibirá el premio. I, uh, I have to say that I truly am amazed and surprised mm. to be given the award. I'll say so tonight. I never go back to a piece of work when it's complete. Sometimes I have to watch it for, for, uh, to, do, um, to redo some of the sound, but I, I, it, I get too upset watching. <laughs> it, I feel I leave very depressed, so I don't watch. La verdad I, I, es que... You go. Thank you. La verdad es que me siento absolutamente maravillada y, y sorprendida de recibir el galardón que voy a recibir esta noche. Yo nunca eh, vuelvo a visionar eh, una, un trabajo mío que ya haya completado, sino la verdad es que acabo agobiada y, y deprimiéndome. I live a very quiet life. Um, I don't meet many people. I'm completely unaware that so many people have seen work that I've been in. I mean, I know there are figures of how many people have seen, but it doesn't mean anything until you meet people. So I am truly amazed that you should have seen all these films. And I am, I'm very grateful. I really, really am. Soy, no, no soy consciente de, 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 de todo lo que he hecho, tengo que pararme a pensarlo y, y estoy muy agradecida de que, de, por el hecho de que, de que usted las, ustedes las hayan visto todas. Es algo que la verdad me, me halaga mucho y, y agradezco desde el, desde el fondo de mi corazón. Gracias, Alice. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Thank you.